Give the Lord a hand, praise. I like that everybody can come and let me say such things. Praise God. Hallelujah. I just got some soup from the school of the prophet. Praise God. Amen. presence is here. Oh, 
presence here in the right atmosphere for this teaching. Amen. Let's give him another hand praise. Amen. Thank you for coming out tonight. Amen. I made a commitment to be here. Lord say so on the first and third of Tuesday nights. Amen. And I'm excited that God is doing the spirit of his ministry. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you again for coming out. Amen. I just want to uh, start promoting um, the upcoming power service on the first Sunday night. This first Sunday night. Um, I'm not going to try to do them every Sunday, first Sunday night. I'm going to try to do it every other Friday night. We need to get consistent people so I'm feeding away. I want them to be events. But it takes a lot of preparation and spirit to uh, release power uh, in a power service here. I'm trying to have every month and then we want to make it again we have a month to promote it. So I'm not going to promote it now for passing the word this first Sunday night in March and then it's 7 o'clock be here. I'm second time truly blessed as people. There's a lot of people that need to live and to, uh, feel the presence of God and let the people here that night go through these events. Will never fail us. Amen. We want to pack the place out, so we want to start promoting now. I want you guys to start calling people, let them know. Uh, I thought I'd be doing every first year, every other. If you might serve me, you can with me, whatever. If I'm going to burn myself out. Amen. Amen. People are going to be here. Amen. It takes a lot of preparation. Uh, amen. You know, to operate in the Different dimension of the spirit. Yes, Lord. Amen. It's very taxing. Somebody, yes, Lord. somebody say yes, Lord. Yes. 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 Somebody in agreement with me? Yes. Oh, we're up in the pool. Yes. Yeah. 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 What happened is a, a person it can, on the anointing, you can minister like 35, 40 minutes, like you're in an eight hour a day. Because you drain, you release your virtue. So, so when people see people operating this thing, they have, they have to pay a price to get to that point. Then they, 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 they have to fill themselves in and to drain themselves. They have to go through a preparation of restoration. Amen? It, it's, this is no joke. This is very serious. You be given the spiritual realm with demonic spirits. Yeah. A lot of people see people go, oh, I don't want to do that. Y'all, you really want to do it. You know, the price is paying, but you can do it if you're willing to pay the price. There's a price you have to pay. Amen. You're going to die to yourself. You're going to die to your flesh. Your own will. Amen. It's, it's nothing to play with. Make one mistake. Are you, are you fighting the spiritual realm with these demonic spirits? Who well, don't get tired, amen? They ready to go 24 7. You want to fight? They are ready to fight with you, amen? They trying to wear the saints out. Hey, I gained some wisdom, amen? I, I say I choose my battles, amen? Uh, Lord, you change with the fight those jokers, amen? Amen. You're worried angels. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm, I'm in you. Oh, I'm seated in heavenly places. Hey, Christ. I have everything under my feet. So if I keep it under my feet, I can worry about them demons and devils. It's when I make a mistake and slip out of my seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm trying to stay in Christ. Amen. 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 When I, I know when I started out, I, I was. Every every service was war. It was in every person the demon to us. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah. This person got demons to send us all the spirit. We were doing deliverance every service. I did it years and years. Then I got older and I said, I got wise. I said, wait a minute here. Yeah. These demons ain't getting tired. This ain't like I was doing a little tired. <laughs> yeah, he cast out some people. 
Come bring them back. God was so time. Same, same people in the same line. Amen. Every time. Yeah, it is like it's kind of like they pick those devils up, go back, take them back home with them, come back more and more demons. We have seen some stuff. Because we see uh, the levitation, uh, uh, demons manifest full blown in front of me. Just, I mean, it's the other side. We went backwards and pop, bones pop, 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 pop. And she rose up bigger than me. She, she, she was a minister. Swing with a warlock. And, and people was running out the door screaming and hollering and saying, I didn't come in for that. I attacked that thing, took it down. It was like exorcist. Yeah, we people see some stuff like rats run up in his face. I mean, under the skin. Oh, we just see some stuff when it started. I've been, I've been doing some stuff. I've seen some stuff. Oh, really? I ain't seen all the stuff we have seen. This is a manifestation that they see on TV. Amen. It's a real thing. It's it's a don't jump in. Yeah, we see that the, the boy. Yeah, yeah, I just put kids out there and keep me in there sometimes. They be some little baby dev devils. We, we saw the boy his eyes changed to diamonds. Slid it. Then he says teeth came down and yeah, it was a mess. It, yeah, oh you know, yeah, we went through some stuff. So that was been some real stuff. And uh, so this is no joke, it's a price to pay for this. You know, just make sure you show enough you in the Lord so it's going in that round. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And they wait for you to slip. They wait for you to slip. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your Paul, I know, he's a no fool. Oh, my God. And yeah, so, yeah, we see. We used to throw it out in big time out of team. We was we were we, 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 we military, amen. But uh but we had the victory every time in Christ. I mean, see, when you're in Christ, you can have the victory. Amen. Same churches in our cover now. Yeah. The, the man. It was a, like they, got, they came out of a they're like a Baptist, you know, and we came in Pentecostal and they were that was a big joke. They were all unconscious. I know so many guys on the floor. We were we had to just take them out in the hallway. We were pray in the hallway. The pastor was unconscious, they tried to, to recover him. The Holy Ghost, the line was so long, the whole, we had no place, the Holy Ghost came and took the line. <laughs> And then the girls start throwing up and stuff. Yeah, uh, we, we we have been through some stuff. We went to Vegas, whole pulpit was unconscious. So, you had to see if I was real. Yeah, yeah. Planted to, yeah. You got slain. <laughs> 20 minutes is with a drop of oil. One drop of oil to take them out. So, we have been through a lot of stuff. You got that in the back. You haven't seen. The, the, the degree of this anointing is usually activated triple when we go outside because of that inner house that he used to it. But when we go out, he just back us up. I mean, just greater, greater signs and wonders um, when we go out, you know. Not be shy, but you know, uh, I've been out in a while. And uh, when we do want to get a team to go out uh, in places and minister to the people. Amen. But here, you know, uh, you guys haven't felt the full magnitude of this anointing yet. You haven't seen that <laughs> yet. Praise God. But uh, it has to be a unity of the spirit with with the team to make that happen. You know, it's all being oneness. Amen. Amen. I was there to um, teach something. And uh, breakfast here, I mean, you see the photograph so for Sunday? Okay. Yeah. Well, what happened? They caught. They captured me in my glorified state on the picture, and uh, 
Uh, did you haven't seen it, the pregnant thing that he showed to you, and, uh, and that was something I've never seen before. Um, but God will, if those cameras can see, catch the spirit, and I want the breath to be able to see it. And my teachings are along that line, so you understand, you know, that all you have that, that God will reveal the, 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 that you and your glorified, glorified state. Uh, when you see it picking you, it's something you've never seen before. It's like, it was unreal. Can you describe it?
Any hand came through that damage, you know, I came to the sense that that's what the damage. Unusual uh, anointing, kind of weird anointing, peculiar anointing. And there's a you know, these anointing go all the way back to those prophets of old. See, the anointing of this house that you come from, uh, the Lord laid hands on me personally. I mean, the end part of the thing. So I transferred all through this lineage to the faith and the spirit. See, a lot of people get into ministry, you know, I saw a ministry without, the, without, I say, God be a part of it. You know, just somebody ain't going to do something he chose me to do. And you get so much, you get so much, you, you get so much people coming to when you come with a radical type ministry, totally different uh, and unique, you know, people are so you're not so traditional. So people come against you, you'll be strong enough to withstand uh, really fear, you know, uh, so people don't understand you because we are peculiar people. You know? So come with me. And we're going to get into teaching and somebody will be blessed tonight. God, it is, oh, Heavenly Father, I come to you now in the mighty name of Yahshua, and I'm going to share with you, and I thank you for the revelation, the understanding, that the eyes of their understanding being enlightened, Father, let's take them to the next round of dimension to understand who they are, the way you see them. You see them from the way they see themselves. Let them know who they are. They are a spirit that have a soul that lives in a body. Spirit. You are spirit. I'm going to ask you to bless this teaching tonight and bless your children now. They leave here, they won't be the same. Your lives will not be the same. In Jesus' name, we ask you to We love him for you. First John, third chapter. It says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. It's you and I. That we should be called the sons of God. And we're talking about male and female. Remember, there's no male or female in Christ. We're all sons. You don't say sons and daughters. His sons. Why? Because we all men. The women is just woman, man, a woman, a man with a woman. Amen. Are you in me? Y'all are men. Y'all men. Man can. Let's see. Man and woman can. Man can. Go back to Genesis and see when he said I was. Let us make man in my image and likeness. He said, let us make man and woman. Man can, so where do you mean? We got to have a womb. Okay, so that's why you can be a son. There's no male or female in Christ. The spirit. Okay? So when I have all sons, I know we're like Samuel Dollar. But the boys say, your sons. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so, amen. He said we, uh, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. See, the world knows us not, because it knew him not. Amen. He was the son of God. Talks of the Son of Man. But the world didn't know him. He was God incarnate in flesh. So the world don't know us. All of the sons of God. Once we've been born again, we become the creations in Christ. Jesus. We are different. We're not the same. We've been transformed. We, we, we are different in the spirit. We can understand that. Okay, it says, 
Beloved, now this is important. Beloved, now. Underline the word now. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. You may underline that and really comment upon that, meditate upon that. He said, Beloved, the beloved, he said, now. He didn't say in the future. He said, now. In the present tense. <laughs> See, you're not going to get this teaching I'm giving you tonight until you get this revelation that you're already a son of God. See, when God, see, you're already complete in Christ. I'm talking to those who have been born again. Uh, see, I'll be on 1 John, the fourth chapter. No, excuse me, 1 John, the third chapter. I'm on verse uh, 2. You're not going to get the revelation of the teaching I'm giving you tonight. I don't understand that. Beloved, now. Say, say now I am a son of God. Now I say, right now, I'm a son of God. Now, son of God. See, until you get the revelation that you are a son of God, you will never see the manifestation in your life. You won't be able to speak to the weather and it would change. Because you won't bring who, who you are. The Lord uh, taught me this. See, my teacher came to the Holy Spirit, <laughs> not through man. And when I was in Chicago back, I went to a church and back in the 90s. I went to Chicago and it was, uh, I remember going to the hotel room that day. It was pouring down rain. And, and I was going to the hotel room and I said, I wish it would rain. And I had the Spirit Lord say, well, speak to the weather. I came in spirit. I said, okay. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command this rain to cease. Five minutes later, just bam. I said, wow. That's when I got the revelation. I told the young lady this concept. Uh, and she went to Georgia. It's the funniest thing I've heard before. She called me from Georgia and said, Wonder. Huh? Wonder. Yeah. She said, because she, I was doing this teaching in these classes, she went to Georgia and she went, you know, did real estate. And one day they had a, she had an apartment to go in and it started raining. And boy, that real estate book couldn't come with the rain. And she said, oh, I got it. She said, did she say that? Pastor said, we can speak to the weather. And they go, there he goes. We have no faith, you know. Then he, she, she said, she went to the Lord and said, Lord, the apostle said, Apostle Barnett said, you know, but I put it on me. Then Daddy, when I speak to the weather, it will, it, it will stop. She said, told God that I said it, you know. And then she said, I command. This storm to stop in the name of Jesus. She said, five minutes later, it just stopped. The sun came out. She said, she fainted. <laughs> <laughs> she fell on the couches. Because <laughs> it happened. God backed her up. We've been years, man. <laughs> it's when you know who you are. You have to know who you are. See, the devil don't want you to know who you are. See, that's why I say, to get the revelation, you have to underline this scripture. It's a very powerful scripture. It says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. See, this scripture, you need to go back to, and when you go through situations and circumstances where the devil will back you up. Amen? He will back you up in situations where you will sort of, you have to go with that, that word. Say, beloved, now are we the sons of God. See, man, you, you know that you don't just, you are a son of God. You're a son of the Creator. We're joined ours with Christ. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ. And Christ is high above the principle of the power of the throne and dominion every name of the name, and this word is where to come. If you don't know this in your mind, in your suitcase, you know, the devil can back you up and bring down in your mind the situation. So this scripture then underline it, you know, as a foundational in your development in the spirit. 
as God, because once you guys are here, it means you guys are going to operate in the gifts, the signs and wonders. I know it, or you wouldn't be here, amen, with dinner with me if you didn't want this kind of ministry, amen? Amen. So, this scripture is very important to know who you are, amen. But it says, now, not tomorrow, are we the Son of God? And it do it, and it do it not, it do, do it not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Uh, put, shall be like him. But we shall see him as he is, his glorified state. And every man that has this hope in him purified himself. Now this is the key. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. So it's up to you to purify yourself. Not for the Holy Spirit to purify you, not for Jesus to purify you, not for the Father to purify you, but for you to purify yourself. Underline that. I must purify my See, that's something I have to do. I have to work with the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's up to me. If I want to, uh, if I be on the Son of God, I want to operate like the Son of God with the manifestation of the thing. He said, He said, the greater works you will do. Because I go to the Father. If you're going to do the greater works, then right there, you need to start purifying yourself. A lot of people don't deal with that. It's up to you to clean yourself up. It's up to you to clean your act up. It's up to you to clean your mind up. It's up to you to clean your mouth up. Purify yourself. Underline that. You got to be powerful when you need it tonight. You get an impartation. It says, and every man that has this hope in him purify it himself. Even if he is pure. See? You have to purify yourself. Now you learn two things. That now you are sons of God. Okay? And that we will be like him when he appeared. Okay? But to do that is something we have to do. We, we, we got to do what? Purify ourselves. We do what? Purify ourselves. Do it one time. Do what? Purify Purify ourselves. So if you're not seeing the manifestation in your life, what? Guess what? You have not purified yourself. You ain't cleaned your act up. You still riding dirty. Come on, somebody. Don't be called riding dirty. Amen? Uh, you need to purify yourself. Okay. Here we go. Who had, whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. But sin is the transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. So whosoever died in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither know him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. And he that committed sin is of the devil. Take that to the bank. Oops, I'm sorry, I can hear you. See, people are going to script it in and go all the way down. They take something lack and leave stuff out. Amen? Now, it's the basic saying, you're going to get something up. You want to be like him when he appeared. What you want to do? Do it while you go sin. Then he was righteous. Do righteousness. Just like the right things. You know, the wrong thing. The right thing. You've been justified. Jesus, when he died on the cross, he, he justified you. Now from justification, you go through the purification state. On your way to glorification. See, that's the, it's the purging, the cleaning state. 
you have to work in that process. Jesus made his call when he died no promise for you. He justified you to be saved. Come on, somebody. He paid the price and justified you. Okay? So you justified. Well, after the justification, you go into the purification process or the purging process, which means something you have to do. You need to clean up your act. Say, I got to clean my act up. I got to clean my act up. Amen? Amen. So you know what I'm saying? ye are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Right. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. Amen. So, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So, you need to clean up the house. Say, I need to clean up the house. I need to clean this temple up. Give the Lord a hand praise. Now, ye are the sons of God. You're the sons of God. You're the sons of God. Amen. Very important you understand that. I want you to understand that God wants us to be something more than ordinary people. He wants us to be more than ordinary people. Come with his sons. See, ordinary people are just people or nations. But we are sons of God. Which means God don't want us to be ordinary. Okay? If you are ordinary, you have not touched the ideal principles of God. If you're just ordinary, you haven't touched the ideal principles. Of God. God works on a plan based on a principle. God works on a plan based on a principle. You need to start learning the principles of God. Then you understand the plans of God. He got principles in the earth realm that you need to learn those principles. Then you'll start seeing the manifestation of the works of God when you learn the principles. Amen? Like the one he got seed time and harvest. It's a lot of the person. He said, if you want seed time, I plant a seed, I get a harvest. I don't plant a seed, I don't get no harvest. Same as that. So people operate within that. Okay? We as children of God are men is to be extraordinary or extraordinary extraordinary we don't have to be ordinary we need to be extraordinary we just can't be just ordinary people see sons of God are, are extraordinary they're not ordinary they are extraordinary or extraordinary God don't, don't want ordinary people you be ordinary person, you come transformed with some of God, then you're going to be extraordinary. But he's not ordinary. Oh, you don't hear me, man. Oh, my God. He's extraordinary. He's a word. So he's our mission. I'm the coach and all. Oh, my God. I'm the present God. He's not just ordinary God. Amen. That's a little God to sit there and look at you. People worship, worship that little God like a little statue. He can sit there and look at you. can't see a word. can't do nothing. This, in fact, man made them himself, called them out. He was saying, hey, you're the God. Yeah. Only good to know God. God is a really a word from the German word, God, which means deity. Only you know, I don't use the word God because, you know, you can't tell we're talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob <laughs> unless you, because the only you see it in writing is a big G. When you say it, amen, when they say, uh, uh, I, you know, I'm living God. I said, wait a minute, what kind of a big G or little G? What are you talking about? Amen? Hey, what are you talking about? You know, you're talking about, hey, they call it, they call it God. Don't even, when people say you the word God to you, you better know if you're talking about the devil or not. Amen? I don't assume they talk about the same God, or the deity of uh, uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Yahweh. Amen? You are, you, there's only people you discern, you need some clarity what God you're talking about. There are a lot of gods out there. Amen? 
Amen? Amen. Oh, you don't hear me now. Now get caught up on this and say, oh, I believe it, brother. Jeez, I know you believe it's Satan. Uh, they bring a little statue when they bring a little statue. Hey, you yeah, all know who you're stuck. I said, you're the only son of the world. Naked in the stuff. Any gods. Oh, they worship me. They just bow down these little statues. See, hey, that's a god. A deity. Amen? Uh, you guys read the book uh, 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 with Joshua Mitham uh, uh, He was in that witchcraft. I got him in the office. He gave him fifteen dollars. Look at that book. They tried worship a rock. Worship a rock for centuries. A rock. But really, when it was something was under the rock, it was a it's a fallen angel under the rock. You should get that book, you know, blow your mind, and you will start understanding how the really spirit realm operates. We call it the redemption of the African war. We got in the office. I'm supposed to say, Josh will make a mighty, and that he take you deep in the dark side so you understand how Satan keeps you work. You say the right hand man. It's 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 some stuff y'all don't even know. Amen? So it's available for $15 a month. Amen? Mm -hmm. General Butt Naked. <laughs> and the documentary that I'm telling you about the redemption of General Butt Naked. I'm trying to get in here. Amen. Mm -hmm. God has no room for ordinary men. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have no room for ordinary men. He needs extraordinary people to do work for him. He's an ordinary folk. No, he needs extra. And with him inside of them, they come extraordinary. Oh, you don't hear me now. Amen? Amen? So the ordinary focus, you were ordinary when you got born again. Once you got born again, you became extraordinary. Amen? A lot of you are extraordinary, but you know you're extraordinary, but you're still riding dirty. Come on, somebody. Get you to that point. Amen. But when God lays hold of a man, he makes him extraordinary in personality, in power, in unction, thought, and activity. Extraordinary. Different. Unique, different. They don't have this, this ordinary, they, even in personality <laughs> out there. I mean, the power is different, the unction is different, the activity is different. Become extraordinary because you have him inside of you. Yeah. And you're not no ordinary. You're extraordinary. So I'm not extraordinary. When I clean up my mess, the Lord of hand from this. The loving man. I'm going to put it That's my nice. That man are the sons of God. You are right now like you were at now faith. Man, right this moment, you are the sons of God. I'm talking to people that have been born again. Anybody have been born again? That means that you're extraordinary. You're not ordinary. There are folks who can't deal with you because you, you're different. Amen. You know, so, I, I can't relate to that. Oh, it's so, I don't understand that word. Yeah, you know, kind of weird. They make all this weird, strange, we, we peculiar, we different. Because we're extraordinary. We're not the ordinary folk. We just don't fit in everywhere. Amen. Uh, you know, so I don't want you to run with me. Oh, something when they come in the room, whoa, something happens. <laughs> Uh, they get uncomfortable. Right, right, right. Uh, put the weed down. I can't be drinking. I can't be cussing. There's something like that. That person, oh Lord. Right. See, it's because we're extraordinary. We're an extra. <laughs> Amen? And people notice it, you know? They notice it. They notice it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, leave, boy. Right Oof. See, so you would never reach ideal purpose on any line without that word becoming the epistle. The letter, the epistle. The word had become real. 
See, we are living epistles to be read by man. So we don't read the Bible as it does. And then, see, 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 see that, 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 that's what's happening behind the pool. That's why now there's so much mess up in the house of God. Because I, been, I was talking to folks about, you know, when you become a minister, people around there read the Bible, but they read you. Amen? Now, if you are slipping, sliding, peeping, hiding, committing, and dunking, and fornicating, it, the people that don't think it's all right for them to do it. So they read the Bible, they read you. Amen. Yeah, I'll get some stuff straight with y'all right here. Amen. Don't get caught up on nobody operating in their damn gifts. For the gifts and calling is about repentance. Amen? Amen. So, so, so some people don't know they're ready to read the word. They look at people uh, with great anointings and authority and, and signs and wonders. And, and, and yet they still out there committing adultery. And they think it's okay. It's no, it's not okay. See, God will not even take away the gift he gives. He will use them. So they stand before him. And he said, Depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you. Lord, did not prophesy in your name. Did not cast out devils in your name. See, the gift of prophecy, the power to cast out devils. But he said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you work of iniquity. I mean, God is the only one employee that will fire you if you keep on working. Amen. Amen. So y'all looking at five preachers. Keep it on working until you stand before God and say, Depart from me, you work of iniquity. And y'all think it's okay to do what they do when the word says it's wrong. That's right. Amen. I have a, a thing about uh, 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 preachers fornicating and committing adultery. It's a thing around me because it's still my father's personal. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why he didn't go to church. Because he had his spirit in those days where all these people would be doing that kind of stuff with the women in the church. And, and a lot of men think that's what all the preachers are like. Uh-huh. Because that was their thing. And I, you know, when I came to, you know, I came out of the streets, so when I came in and, and, I, and I was in a ministry, and I didn't know God because I came up with a woman's ministry with holiness. There was sitting out to experience ministries, different denominations. I was sitting up on the preacher was doing that. I didn't know. I, I saw him operating power, authority, casting out demons and stuff. You know, I was really, ooh, I was really esteeming that man. And, but I just noticed all, all, all the ministers in the pool pit, I'm sitting up there with them, I'm teaching holiness, and, and they talking in the pool pit. Look at that fine thing north to the do. Up in the pool pit. I said, I said, I thought the man of God was holding all that stuff. I said, and Lord, let me see one night. I was leaving the church. This is true, so I was leaving the church, and the pastor was going too far for me. And I was driving down the freeway. Uh, I said, I said, how was that? He was an old man, driving in the slow lane. I said, I said, and I know where he lives, so we live pretty close. So when we get to a certain street, he will make a left, and I make a right. So I said, I guess I'll follow the pastor to make sure he's okay. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but the, the Holy Spirit kept telling me all the time, something wrong because all these jokers over here said so the apple don't fall too far from the tree. But I kept that caught up on the, the pastor and the power, and uh, that's a holy man. Oh, shit. You know? I, this is my personal story. And then, <laughs> and I got. As I got to the street for the pastor to turn left, and I'm going to turn right, the pastor turned right. Stay with the pastor on the same night. About 10, 10, 30. Uh, his house was down that way. I'm in his house. My house over here, so I said, I'm going to keep following the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> and when the, when the pastor, <laughs> It's a street I got to I'm gonna make my right and the passes kept on going. Hey, what are you doing? This over there, this time of night. Then about a month later, a woman was in the church. And this fine woman got pregnant by the I said, wait a minute. And I found out that she did right over down the street. The Lord said, I'll show you, fool. I 
I know the leg. He showed me. And he put, oh, I, oh man, it, was, it messed me up. It really messed me up because I esteemed that man a guy. I said, because the Lord had teach me that don't be cut up on all that power, signs, and wonders. The gifts and the columns of thy repentance. <coughs> see, see, there were a lot of folks, I changed the subject, but it's very important to become a son of God. Just be the ministry. If you don't be a minister, if you make a mistake, you need to sit down, all right. repent. We all see a folks, you know. So, but, 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 but you know, these guys who do this and keep on, you know, with, 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 uh, without repenting, without changing, I have a problem with that myself. Amen. Because you're hurting the people. Amen. We got a lot of young men watching these pastors. Amen. And they, they think it's okay. And it's not okay. And a lot of people don't like to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it, but I don't have much people to do with it anyway. Come on, somebody. They don't like me anyway. They say, you know, they say, where did Ricky Brown? Ricky Brown don't feel it nowhere. <laughs> y'all don't see how all y'all mess. That's why I don't associate with those jokers. He don't fit in. I don't fit in. I know what y'all are doing. Y'all be surprised. Y'all be very surprised what they be doing out there. Amen. Amen. Beloved, now are we sons of God. See, you become the living epistle by the power of the Holy Ghost. You become the living force of the epistle of the revelation of God. You have the revelation of God. That God is inside you. The Holy Spirit. See, see you have to understand that. Then you marry, you're a son of God. You are not now. See, when God looks at you, he looks at you totally different. He looks at you, see the view of the finished work. When the God showed me me, I just came out of the streets. On drugs for 18, smoking marijuana for 18 years, and my clothes, doing all this stuff, living in the and all down there. When I got truly saved, I was in the women's ministry. I tell you my testimony. God's already giving me visions. The vision he gave me, he showed me my end in heaven, dressed in this robe with something on my head. Now it was hard for me to accept. I didn't I didn't read it, but I, it was hard for me to accept what he showed me in the vision of myself. Till I came to revelation and understand that he will show you. He sees you totally differently. He sees you finished. Yes. See, we are complete in Christ. When God used to show you something, he showed you the end of it. Because he goes from the end backwards. He, he, everything's complete in him. It's like, it's like a revelation to Genesis instead of from Genesis to Revelation with God. That's why the Torah is read from the right to the left. Amen? But it's like the end to the either side like reverse. You have to say God. So when God shows you a vision, this might have somebody out. Of you, he shall probably show you the finished work of it. Then it's up to you to get to that point of the finished work. Now, like he showed me in Africa, now I don't see how I messed up I was. He showed me a vision of Africa nine years ago. Amen. I said, I don't know about it, but he, but he showed me the end of it. He showed me uh, in Africa two mansions, people all prosperous and dressed up, celebrating me. They knew me in the dream. But I walked through the people, they were happy. And the Lord showed me a sign of my address, 1737. Like on LAX. That, that was my home sign right there. I said, I, 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 I told you the dream. Then you know, uh, uh, Leo Tumba came in my house that same day. They had got a spirit from Africa because the king from Africa came in my house when I was at the ministry. And I said, I don't want to go to Africa. So why not when I went to Africa, the sign they gave me was the worst. And I, I was saying, you know, where's all the rich people in Africa? Tell me that if I got to go, I know God showed me all these rich people with mansions and stuff, you know, that that's where I would be with the rich people in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Not so. See, it, 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 it was symbolism. <laughs> God was showing me that 
my relationship with the people will bring prosperity to them. But when I, he said in the Liberia, one of the worst assignments you can have them because this country it went through 14 years of war, infrastructure to up, no electricity, no running water, no toilets. That means 72. And when I flew in that place, it was dark. No light. It was scary as they were trying to land a plane or nothing. It was like a dark continent. You know, it was like, I heard all that witchcraft there. I visited a plane. We could. <laughs> I said, wait. Well, they had only a few lights, you know, they used generators. So when I came in late and then the generator, people had lights out. You know, the, <laughs> I said, where are we going? And we went around and wanted the city. It was dark. Get down there. <laughs> Place tore up. I mean, I mean, tore up. I mean, the place tore up. I mean, it's, the infrastructure they pulled their face all up. They, you know, they all the dams blew up. You know, electricity and very few places had running water and stuff. And and, and it's like that had a joke on me. You know, like okay, I showed you in symbolism. You thought you were up in these stuff. You, you, you wanted to be with the rich after me. Amen? But I got a plan for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You with my real folks. The poor ain't got nothing. Amen? And you must be amongst them. That's what I'm dealing with. I mean, they live up a bowl of rice. But, you know, and I, and, and I got a revelation, you know, I got to understand it. Then if you want me to work with you to bring prosperity to them. So when God shows you a uh, vision, he shows you the end. And he shows you symbolism. Amen? Let's give a lot of hand praise. Let's just talk about it. Amen. Are you guys can see your thing tonight. Hmm. I say it's the power of the Holy Ghost. Did you become the living force of the epistle of the revelation of God? The incarnation of the personality of his presence in the human soul. Do you know you are a son? Do you know your son? Do the Holy Spirit show you? Your son likeness, son desire, son expression, and son's activity. You will start taking on the characteristics of Christ. Amen? You will start having the desires of Christ. The Christ love people. <coughs> See, the, the Lord, Son of God, you have to love His people. Amen. You have to have the compassion. Even the agape love. That's what you did. Not the follow the heroes. But the agape love. Mm -hmm. The God kind of love. That's compassion. See, I don't hear you know what dealing in ministry who don't have compassion for people, don't love God's people. See, see, see this is a people business. If you don't love God's people, then you shouldn't be behind the pulpit. Because your job behind the pulpit is to pull the people out of the pit. You're going to pull them up. Pull them up. But then you pull up, you have to reach down. Oh my God. That means you have to be humble. To pull them up. You have to love people. You love everybody. You be picking and choosing. That one, I'm just no okay here. You have to have to love God's people. No matter what state they're in. No matter what their social economic status is. You don't love them. Wait it now. Sons of God. His expectation of us is as sons of the Holy Spirit. His expectation of us is to complete the work of Christ on this earth. 
Okay? Now Christ is in the right hand of our perfect position, but he's now he's as a high priest, our soon coming king. He came as a prophet. Amen. Now, we were given the assignment to hold the ground and to expand the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Now, he multiplied himself and they killed him. The devil didn't know what he was doing because when he killed him, he just multiplied himself in us. Oh, you don't hear me now. So, we have the spirit of God inside of us as sons of God. And our job is to subdue the land, to expand the kingdom with him inside of us. See, he's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. But he's also inside of us to the Holy Spirit. So we're sons of God representing Christ on the earth. And there's expectation of us. You'll get it in a minute. You get the revelation of this. So you are body filled with all the fullness of God. That's where you want to be. You want to be a body filled with all the fullness of God coming forth in the glory of the majesty of the Father. And he stands in the earth in flesh, which is us. What's your with the accreditation process? What's your know who you are? That God stands in the earth right in the flesh. In us. Doing these great works. So but he did all he did is multiply himself. He just multiplied Christ. He just multiplied Jesus. He did the multiplication process. Once we were all made to wait for the manifestation of the Son, all nature is wait for the manifestation of the sons of God. So where are the sons of God? When they arise up. When the sons of God rise up, they rise up with a power and authority. They can speak to situations and the change. Get the circumstances in the change. But as so are we, we're gonna be going through some trials and tribulations. Jesus went through it. They gonna come along. We're gonna go through suffering. We're gonna go through persecution. See, the Lord showed me that he said, follow Jesus. When he went and got baptized, when I recognized him publicly, this how he worked for each person that comes behind him. He was a forerunner. Okay, he went before us. So you study his life. We go through the same thing. All we could regard the same. To get the self. Then to the cross where we die to self. Amen. Amen. Once we die to self, that's when we can rise up in power and yeah. glory. Are you going to hear me now? It's a transformation. This is, this is father. We found that something. Look at the revelation. Is it father? He's lit. What you went through, you will go through. You're not going to be a natural, you'll be a spiritual process. You're the foreground. You won't get the persecution. People will come trade. People will come against you. Uh -huh. People will try to kill you. They're going to do all these things that Jesus went through. That's a cross. When you and I have to bear a cross, represent <coughs> death to self. Only when you die to self, when you're going to see us, you see yourself in a glorified state. The time you get in the pool pit, you're going to die to self. Yeah. That's why they, they, kept, they, kept, they can catch you in a glorified state because you to operate him to operate in you, you, you have to be out the way. I had experience when I was in Vegas. He stepped in my body. I mean, true. He saw it. He had to carry my body around. The most, I could not. I had fasted so many days and the Lord just stepped. It was like the most, I only had it one time. And he was like, step true in my body. And like when he pushed out of my body, he pushed me back. It's like, I was looking. 
and he's in front of me. He tell you what happened. He saw all that weird stuff happen, that strange manifestation, the whole proof that I'm conscious. That's because I had prepared my body for the fullness to step in. But there was so much power, I couldn't stand up. It two people had to carry me around, carry my body around and do all these things. You have to understand that he wants to come into your body in a fullness. He's there, but he wants to manifest himself more and more, stronger and stronger. But it's yeah. more purification, more consecration. Yeah. Now I'm teach you guys a secret. He taught me about this, about being a vessel of, of God. And, and I'm telling you something, you never forget this. this, this, this. He showed me this. He said, we are king's vessels. Now, a king's vessel is, if you go to ancient days, you know, the king's vessel or the cup of the king, he uses. It has jewels on it. Okay? It's like represent the gifts. Okay? Okay, it's jewels. So it stands out from all other vessels on the table, the king's vessels. It's for the king to shoots in the king. You know the vessels at the table, you know what I stand, the king's vessel. You know? The king's vessel gotta be bigger and pretty and everything. So what happened with the king's vessel, when the king when the king's not using that vessel, what is it? It's nothing but a vessel. It's nothing but an instrument. It might look pretty. But it it's good for nothing because all the king's not using it. Never look at this analogy. He's talking about this. But me personally, I understand the gifts of eating. He said, it's nothing. It's an empty cup. And what they do with the cup, the servants take the king's vessel and place it in a cabinet. Glass cabinet, sit there. You look at it and buy it, but it's nothing but a pretty cup sitting there. Ain't doing nothing. When it's sitting in the cup, in the cabinet, it's called consecration. Then set apart. Then when the king calls for the vessel, the servants go get the vessel. Take it out of the cabinet. First thing they do, before they take the king, they take it and wash it. Called sanctification. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sanctification. Then they take the sanctified vessel, the sacred for the king, and what did the king do? He takes something, wine or water, he pours into it. Oh, it represents the Holy Ghost. So he fills the vessel up. Then he takes the vessel that he pour out. What's in the vessel? He emptied the vessel. That's the activation of the gifts, the use. See, during that process, the vessel is being used. But one thing you can get is nothing but a vessel until the king starts to use it. When the king uses it, it has to set aside consecration. Then go through the sanctification when the king uses it. Then the king imparts it to it that he pours out. Then he can be it, watch it, set it back up. Then you know, you might be a vessel with the gifts, but you are nothing until the king decided to use you. Come on, somebody. So don't get no big deal in it. Amen. But he might have decided to use you. He might set you in that day. I ain't using that one. Give me another one. He just set the up, into it, put it in the cabinet, and a long consecration. <laughs> Never forget that. Holy Ghost taught me that. He taught me that. He said, what? You see, the sanctification. He says, it's consecration and sanctification. Then the impartation. Then activation. Then you pour it out. So what God would do was he consecrated. Then you clean. It's no service. Then he fills you up. Then you get to pour out. That's what he did. When he fills you up, that's what he can use. And he pulls you out. You are nothing but a vessel. Don't get no big head. But he would take that vessel and just break it. 
But he only going to have the power to put the broken pieces back together. Amen! I'm going to break it up. I'm going to break it or make it. Amen? Are you guys learning anything? I teach with the Spirit. Amen. First John 4, 4 says, Greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. What is inside you is mightier than all the power of darkness. Mightier than the power of disease. Mightier than any power of witches, warlocks, demons, devils, principalities, and powers. And rulers of darkness. What's inside of you? Comply to you or now you're a son of God. And the greater one is inside of you. Never forget that. You have great a power than all the power of darkness inside of you. But there's a greater one inside of you. Now let me now. You are a son of God. Come on, that's the Holy Ghost over here. There's something ringing supremely great in you more than in the world. When you are in that place in Christ, and you come into that place in Christ in righteousness and holiness, and then you are living the righteous life. But Paul said it better. I beseech you, brothers, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable because it's your reasonable service. You are. Your body. You want your body. You don't want it dead. You want it live. You don't want it dead. You want it alive, a living vessel. But you want it holy. Which made it acceptable. And it's just your reasonable service. Now, sir, that ye are the sons God. He said, be ye holy, because I am holy. Be perfect, because I am perfect. It's the first message he had been preaching when I went up to the edge of my first study. He said, all the time, be holy, because I am holy. Do you know, son of God, and your father is holy. So he said, be holy, because I am holy. Be perfect, because I am holy. You can get to that with this perfect life. Now we'll get the teaching like you tonight. The consequence of the flesh. The importance of the flesh. That you still remember. But a vessel is being used by the king. Only when the king sees fit to use you. The worst thing in the world. Take it for granted. Go out there and nothing happens. Close with Hebrews, second chapter. Six verse to ten. Two six to ten. But one in a certain place testifies, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Oh, the son of man that thou visited him. I'm trying to stand this with a really check this out. Go back. What is man that thou art mindful of him? You talking about man. Or that the son of man that thou visited him. You talking about man. Thou makest him for this man a little lower than the angels. Thou crowned him with his man with glory and honor. See, we already crowned with glory and honor. See, a lot, a lot of people misread that thing in that particular area talking about Jesus. He's not talking about man. It's a father. I'm going to show you something. I'll show you when they bring Jesus into this. But they said, Thou maketh him a little lower than the angels, talking about man. Thou crowned him, talking about man, with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things in subject of his feet. Man, but in that he put all in subjection under him. See, the way God did in the beginning, he put everything in subjection under Adam. 
He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we are not yet all things but put under him. But we see Jesus. They bring Jesus in. Who was, and they're talking about Jesus now, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, through should taste death for every man. You got to get this down. But it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons into glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Which means God had crowned man with glory and honor. Amen? Paul came. He had bring Jesus in who was made a little lower than an angel. But he was in the flesh. He was God in the flesh. Crowned with glory and honor. So men already had glory and honor. So when Jesus died, he paid the price of the sins of Adam. Brought man back in the right relationship with God. So God see us that way the, the veil was torn, that man can come back. See in the Garden of Eden, Jesus, I mean uh, Adam, fellowship with the Father. But he seen him separated. Jesus came back the second Adam, he turned that wall of petition. Now we go back in. Now we still had an arm of the glory. Now everything we do now is through Christ. That's why I said we've been raised together to sit together in heavenly places in Christ. He, so the Father placed us inside Christ. Then the Father placed Christ high above principality, power, throne, and dominion, every name of his name, and his word, and his word to come. So when you see that in Christ, the Father placed Christ high above principality, power, throne, and dominion. So our position is inside Christ. So everything you do is through Jesus. In Christ. In Christ. In Christ. In Christ. So we're to be in Christ. So when we step into Christ, that's when you start seeing the manifestations of the greater work. Because we're inside Him. He's in operating through us. Because He paid the price. It's His power. It's His glory. Oh, my. We're inside Him. Now we are sons of God. Because we are in Christ. We are the children of God and the sons of God. Say, now we are the sons of God. I said, we really, with a different attitude of what such a come, get back in Christ. Purify yourself. Stay consecrated and holy before God. Then, you in Christ and you start speaking. The crazy things. Why things so happen? Why things so turn around? Our clothes, beloved, you are now sons of God. Give the Lord a hand, praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank you, Father. We just praise you for the impartation of the Spirit. We thank you for blessing your children. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Now, I would like to ask questions. Did anybody, did anybody get any revelation and have any of you have anybody here? Yes, in the first. Um, I just want to thank you for the confirmation